Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, what I want to do within this lesson is show you guys just how easy it is to do super well in the unseen poetry exams. Okay, remember guys that the GCSE Literature Paper 1 and Paper 2 exams are now just around the corner. They're just peaking, okay? We've got about three weeks and then it's all systems go with the GCSE English 2024 exam. So guys, I'm gonna try and keep this lesson brief because sometimes some of the complaints that I get from you guys is my lessons are too long. You waffle too much. Can you keep this to less than 10 minutes long? Okay, so I'm gonna try my best within this lesson to keep it quite brief, but to also equally show you guys when it comes to section C of the literature paper two exam, okay, this is the unseen poetry. You've got the 24 marker question as well as the eight marker. I wanna show you guys actually how easy it is to do really well on this exam, okay? I wanna present with you guys the cheat hood to do really well in both the 24 marker and the 8 marker and I'm going to try and do this within the next five minutes okay so I'm going to try and keep this video nice short simple and sweet now guys um, lots of GCSE students have a lot of anxiety around this part of the paper because when it comes to poetry, poetry is already hard enough as it is without literally being expected to interpret two poems on the spot, kind of answer a question or rather two questions based on the two poems and lots of students just simply say, what if I misinterpret it? Poetry is not my strongest suit. Even worse so, you know, looking at two poems I've never seen before in my life. Guys, I wanna show you literally when it comes to section C of the unseen paper, AQA gives you heavy clues as to what the poem is about, okay? So let's begin with the first major hack that you should literally remember going into your final exam in three weeks time, okay? This is Literature Paper 2, section, section C of Unseen Poetry, which I believe actually lots of students can do really well as long as they remember this, okay? This is a major hack. Remember, when it comes to Unseen Poetry, okay? This is poems you've never seen before in your life, you don't have to memorize anything. The exam board, AQA, literally gives you within the questions that you're presented in the 24 marker and the eight marker, the answer, okay? If you literally begin this part of the paper, but first looking at the questions, look at the keywords, this tells you exactly what the poem is about, what the poem's main message is. So for instance, one question could, for example, say, how does the poet present the feelings about romantic relationships or even relationships? Well, that means before you even read the poem, you already know this poem is about relationships, okay? If, say, for example, um, the question asks, how do the poets present their feelings about um, the city at night, right? That's one of the past paper questions. Well, that means before you even read the two poems, you already know that both poems are about cities at night, okay? This is the biggest hack that a lot of students don't even realize when it comes to unseen poetry, literally. The examiners are giving you within the question the response and what the poem is about, okay? Now, let's first begin by talking about the 24 marker. I believe that's actually quite easy to do really well in this part of the paper, okay? So this is section C, part one, as long as you remember these three top points, okay? Now remember, with unseen poetry, the 24 marker gives you one poem. Based on this poem, you're given a question such as, and it tends to start with, how does the poet present the feelings about romantic relationships, the weather, blah, 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 okay? So it always asks you something in that line. In terms of how to answer the 24 marker, give yourself a fighting chance of getting as close to 22 to 24 marks by ensuring you firstly write three separate peel paragraphs. When I say peel, I mean point, evidence, explanation, link. If you're not sure what a peel paragraph looks like, literally watch my peel paragraph video, okay? However, when you are approaching the 24 marker, make sure not only do you write three separate points and make them very distinct, but also make sure you include your subject terminology. This is your language, form, and structure. And this is how you do it. Step number one, look at the question itself, okay? The question gives you the main message. So in your first paragraph of the 24 marker, summarize what you think the main message is and then link that to form. What does that, does that mean, okay? What does form mean? Form is, how does the poem look like visually? Is it just one stanza, right? So one long poem, or is it written in couplets? Is it written in tercets? Is it written as a sonnet? Form is basically how the poem is laid out. In your first paragraph, when you're summarizing the poem's message in relation to the question, because remember, you're always linking it to the question, link it to form. Your second paragraph, your second pill paragraph, you should try your best to find a contrast or a shift that occurs in this poem. In every single poem that's been written ever, 
always has some kind of shift or contrast. We call this volta, okay? This is where there's a shift or a turning point within a poem. Contrast doesn't mean opposite, it just simply means does the poet begin by describing a happy relationship and then end by a negative point, right? Or is there any type of contrast? Is there a new introduction of, say, a different image? Whatever it is, find that shift or that contrast either in the beginning, middle or end. Meaning, this second paragraph will be a structure paragraph, okay? Beginning, middle or end, Volta, all of that is structure. And then the final thing for the 24 markers so that you can ensure you're literally in the final stretch of this exam, because remember this is going to be the first and the final set of questions. And this question by finding descriptions, other interesting descriptions that paint an image in your mind as readers, okay? And of course, with this one, make sure you talk about language. Is it, you know, does a um, poet paint an image in your mind using similes, using metaphors, using sibilance, whatever it is. That's for the 24 marker. But remember that there's part two to this question. This is the eight marker where you're asked to talk about similarities or differences. How do you approach this? This question always tells you in both the names of the poem, the speakers present ideas about keywords in the question. Read the question first again before reading the second poem and then thinking about the two questions. Now, how do you approach this to make sure you do well in this eight marker? Firstly, make sure you write one comparative peel paragraph. Point on both poems, evidence in both poems, explanation in both poems, link in both poems. Again, watch my comparison um, video where I talk about how to compare any two texts if you're not entirely sure how to structure those types of paragraphs. Now, again, with the eight marker to do really well in this part of the paper, begin by looking at the question because it tells you the answer. But the great thing, because this is an eight marker, you just simply need to just make one point and find step number two, either a similarity or a difference. The one thing that you need to remember is don't recycle the same ideas that you've discussed in the 24 marker because it's just gonna come across as lazy in the examiner's eyes. And then finally, number three for the eight marker, Make sure you talk about methods. What does methods mean when you're mentioning both poets, okay? Is it a similarity or a difference? Methods simply means the use of language or structure by the poet. Again, it's stuff like metaphors, similes, alliteration, oxymoron, that's language, or things like Volta, Ellipsis, Caesura, and John Mont. Once more, guys, I've literally done a definitive list of poetic techniques that you find in any poem. If you're unclear on that, watch that video. So guys, as I promised, I'm gonna keep today's lesson Nice, short and sweet. Guys, this is literally all you need to know when it comes to unseen poetry. And of course, for those of you that might have maybe procrastinated over the Easter break, remember that I'm gonna be having a one-off unseen poetry masterclass uh, just two weeks before the exam, okay? So if you wanna be part of that masterclass, get you know a full list of notes that you need to understand and use prior to your actual exam. If you're practicing and you really wanna do really well in these final GCSEs, make sure you sign up for that. Thanks guys for listening.